Thank you very much, uh, John. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Heritage Foundation. It is my pleasure to introduce our good friend, uh, Con Coughlin, the defense editor of the Daily Telegraph and a world-renowned expert on the Middle East. Con is the critically acclaimed author of several books, including the New York Times bestseller, Saddam, His Rise and Fall. He appears regularly on television and radio in the United States and Great Britain, and has been a frequent political commentator on Fox News, CNN, and NBC, as well as uh, the BBC and Sky News. Con is a veteran foreign correspondent, and his latest book gives a gripping account of Sir Winston Churchill's first military campaign as a young cavalry lieutenant fighting a frontier war against Pashtun tribesmen on the northwest frontier, the great-great-grandfathers of the Taliban and tribal insurgents in modern-day Afghanistan. As Con writes, this is a story of high adventure and imperial endeavor, which contains important lessons and warnings for today. It is fitting that our event on Churchill is hosted by the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Throughout her political career, Lady Thatcher drew strength and inspiration from Churchill's leadership, especially at moments when she faced huge challenges, key moments in history that called for ironclad resolve. She also drew comfort from the fact that Churchill had on numerous occasions found himself alone on the political stage, scorned even by many in his own party, but nevertheless determined to stand by his principles and beliefs. Thatcher's determination to confront tyrannical regimes and reject the temptations of appeasement was influenced by her admiration for Churchill's courage. To quote the Iron Lady, everything about Churchill was heroic. He was a leader, a man among men. And as she recalled in a speech at Blenheim Palace, Churchill's birthplace, for me and for so many others, our ideas of liberty, of honour, of sacrifice, of fellowship, of valour, our idea of Britain herself, have been formed by Churchill's words. Please join me in welcoming Con Coughlin, historian, journalist and staunch Thatcherite. Thank you. Thank you very much for that very warm introduction, Nile. It's a great pleasure to be back here at Heritage. Um, the book, Churchill's First War, um, is a story about what I think is the making of Winston Churchill. When Nile talks about courage, um, his ability to prevail in adversity, this fascinating but neglected period in Churchill's early life um, shows, almost lays the foundations for, 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 for the man Churchill became in later life. Um, and when I approached this subject, I think probably like most people, when I thought of young Winston, I thought of Carl Foreman's film, and I thought of his exploits during the Boer War, his escape from captivity and all that. Um, and in fact, when I, when I was, uh, started research, I had another look at Carl Foreman's film, and the only reference really to Churchill in Afghanistan um, is the opening sequence where you have a picture of young Winston on a gray horse. Um, and the general is saying to one of his uh, young officers, who's that bloody fool on the gray? Someone who wants to get noticed, I suppose, says the young officer. He'll get noticed. He'll get his bloody bl head blown off. Um, and indeed, the reason young Winston went up to the northwest frontier of the British Empire, an area what is, that is today uh, forms part of Pakistan, is he did want to get himself noticed. Um, he was 22 years old. Um, his family background was in some disarray. His father, Lord Randolph, had died of syphilis when Churchill was still studying at Sandhurst. Uh, his mother, Jenny Churchill, a great society beauty, had a reputation as something of a, a grand horizontal uh, for her various dalliances, dalliances with uh, society gentlemen. Uh, among her admirers was the then Prince of Wales, Bertie. Um, and the family had um, a rather difficult reputation in British society. Um, and not only that, they were deeply impoverished. And at the time that Lord Randolph died in 1895, uh, young Winston was just coming out of Sandhurst. 
Um, having had a very indifferent schooling at uh, one of England, uh, Britain's leading public schools, Harrow, uh, and in those days, if you weren't very bright, if you if you weren't uh, if you weren't being singled out for a career in the law or to go to university or, or something useful, you went into the army class. Um, and that's where young Winston languished for most of his days at Harrow. And he was so behind academically that it took him three attempts to get into Sandhurst. He failed the first two attempts and he had to be sent to a, 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 what we call a crammer to, to get him through the exam. Um, so... Young Churchill's fortunes were at a very low ebb, indeed, when he embarked on life. Um, but he made it very clear from a very early age that having decided on a military career, um, and unlike a lot of politicians today, he thought a military career was the perfect foundation for a life in politics. Um, and from a very early age, he, he had this vision of himself going to the remote corners of, of the British Empire, uh, winning medals, um, winning acclaim, and then using that acclaim uh, to launch his political career. Because even at this stage, when he was training at Sandhurst, on his days off, he would go to the House of Commons and hear the great parliamentarians of the day speak. He read avidly up on his, father, his late father's speeches. Um, and in one of his wonderful phrases, he said, and they say, this is, this is at the age of 22, he said that he wanted to beat his medals into an iron dispatch box. So the young Winston was a very precocious character um, and very, very keen to get out to places like the Afghan border and make a name for himself. And in fact, one of his more memorable quotes from this, this period um, that he wrote in his own account of, of his uh, war in Afghanistan, the Malachian Field Force, um, and it just sort of captures the, the joie de vivre of, of Churchill going off to, to battle as a young soldier. He writes, nothing in life is so exhilarating as to be shot at without result. So um, it was really very much with this um, gung-ho attitude that uh, young Winston set off for the northwest frontier. Um, and he, he had uh, the, other, the other thing that was driving him was that he needed somehow to make money. And one of the more sort of enterprising arrangements that uh, had been hit upon in the late 19th century was that uh, British newspapers had hit on this idea that rather than send foreign correspondents off to remote parts of the world at great expense, uh, why not get a bright young military officer to, to write uh, dispatches from the front line? A, they probably had a good idea of what they were writing about. Uh, and secondly, if anything happened to them, um, then the, the, the military would have to take care of all the costs rather than the newspapers. So, um, and in that spirit, um, Churchill got himself an arrangement with my newspaper, the Daily Telegraph, uh, and in fact, it was thanks to Winston Churchill and the articles he wrote during that period that this rather cosy arrangement ended because uh, Lord Kitchener, the then head uh, of the British Army, took such a dim view of the, uh, the witterings of a young subaltern, um, openly criticising the high policy of the British military, that, um, that the, the Lord Kitchener personally ordered that the practice cease, and it's never been undertaken since, except by retired officers. Um, the parallels with today, I think a lot of people in this room, when I say that Churchill was fighting the great-great-grandfathers of the Taliban, would raise an eyebrow. Um, not, not least because Churchill was fighting on the other side of the border. He was fighting in what is now uh, modern Pakistan. But if I tell you that, uh, and when I, I've travelled extensively around this region, um, re researching the book, if I tell you that um, if you've got a map if, from the CIA of all the drone strikes that they've, they've uh, launched in the tribal areas of Pakistan, they correlate almost directly to the villages, tribes, and valleys where Churchill fought in 1897. Um, the story of the young...